My name is Stefan. I work for, uh, at the Open Knowledge Foundation in Germany on a project called Frag den Staat, um, the German FY portal. Uh, similar to my societies, what do they know.com? I'm sure you're all aware of uh, how an FOI portal more or less works. You make FOI requests through it, and uh, the requests are transparently published online. You can like, see the correspondence there. And we are, as a project, more focused on campaigns. So, not only being a platform, a portal for the citizens, but also running our own campaigns and trying to move certain areas of information forward. And one of our biggest campaigns last year was a campaign for access to food safety reports called Top of Secret, which translates to pot secret and amazingly is a bad pun in both English and German. So uh, that worked out quite well, I must say. Um, uh, so what are food safety reports? Uh, this is a food safety report from Denmark. Um, and in Denmark, you can find these reports at the restaurant store and also in an online database. So offline and online, they are quite available. And it has some detailed text and some grades, but it has also this uh, so-called smiley system. And so you have like these uh, little faces on the side that tell you if you uh, should eat there or not. And this one actually has an elite smiley as well. And I, I learned that an elite smiley is if you have like lots of smileys in your history, then you get an elite smiley as well. The problem is the system, we don't have like a system like this in Germany. We have no smiley system and it works a bit differently. So um, <clears throat> since 2003, we have a special federal consumer information law that allows access to food safety reports if they contain deviations from the rules. This law has not been used a lot um, and we wanted to change that. So we partnered with Foodwatch, an NGO, a consumer advocate uh, around, uh, you guessed it, food. Uh, to make access to food safety reports a bit easier. And the idea was that you ask the authority for the report um, uh, of uh, a specific business and uh, the authority will send it to you. Uh, quite simple, actually. And the campaign goal was to convince authorities and politicians that an active transparency approach, so publishing these reports um, or, and making them a bit better and easier to access like the smiley system in Denmark, might be more efficient in answering lots of requests. So instead of you know, having to request them, they should be published. That was the campaign goal. And this is uh, like the user interface, the main user interface of uh, our little application that sits on top of our FOI portal. So we imported uh, over 300,000 restaurants, supermarkets, and other food-related businesses from OpenStreetMap. And then we built a map interface. And people can browse around in their neighborhood and click on uh, the venue that interests them and then make a request to that. And uh, the request interface then looks like this. We automatically find the right authority uh, for that venue by geolocation. And then we uh, draft uh, this uh, request for them automatically. And it is, has more legal stuff hidden behind this ellipsis you can see there. So we already uh, send a lot of other stuff with it, uh, like uh, references to the law, uh, current rulings, and also counter arguments actually already to the most common refusals uh, that a public authority might come up with. And then uh, the problem is, I forgot to mention a little weird detail of this process. Um, the business can by law ask for the requester's name and address. Super weird. Um, we've totally didn't understand why this was in there, but uh, the law is from 2003, it predates uh, GDPR and lots of other privacy related things. Um, and as a requester of government information about a third party, um, you are always in kind of a whistleblower kind of situation. So you, you ask something about a business from the government and suddenly the government gives that business your name and address. It's, it's very, very weird. And um, giving this business access to the data about who requested the food safety report is, uh, so it's at best unnecessary and at worst it's dangerous. We heard some stories that is actually had some blowbacks on the requesters and this is really not how a law should be designed. So if you're looking into FOI laws around the world and you see like a passes like this, a section that um, uh, works like this, uh, be very wary of it. Um, so unfortunately, this is part of the law and uh, this is currently how it works, even if it may be incompatible with actual current GDPR, uh, but uh, we still have to find out and go to the court to, to, to change that. 
but now so the authority they need your name and address um, because they need to give it to the business if they request it so um, and suddenly uh, they also don't reply by email anymore they reply by postal mail because uh, obviously they want to verify that uh, you actually sent them the right name and address um, and suddenly this uh, problem doesn't uh, is, is, so it's suddenly not a email conversation anymore but uh, the request that they get postal mail and need to upload it to the portal in order to keep the correspondence online. Um, so we tell users about this caveat that they um, may, uh, that their name and address may end up with the business, but uh, to our delight, and um, they still requested a lot of food safety reports. So in Germany, we have uh, we had over 46,000 requests made by 25,000 users since January, 2019. And this is roughly a third of all requests we have on the platform in total. And we started nine years ago. So this is hugely popular. So it turns out food safety is really popular uh, and certainly more popular than most of our, our other government transparency topics we have uh, going on. So I explained that to myself with uh, this pyramid, right? Uh, the pyramid of needs. And um, at the top is like uh, self-fulfillment and at the bottom is, uh, you know, safety and nourishment and uh, food safety fits right in there so it's very popular with people so uh, but we also noticed that authorities came up with interesting ways of handling these requests and uh, that means our little diagram here becomes a bit more complicated again so there are 389 authorities that handles food safety in germany at different levels sometimes it's the state is responsible sometimes boroughs of a city state like in berlin but most of the time the district or county level is responsible so now a lot of authorities who possibly have never received a request under the consumer information law before get a lot of these. And we kind of overestimated uh, their expertise in cooperation. So they are often badly informed about the legal situation uh, they're uh, facing with this request. Um, and they have to answer by law, but they have very different interpretations of the law. And now we need to make sure that our users still get a good, uh, a good uh, like help from us. Um, so we started classifying these authorities, uh, these authority reactions. Um, it's a long spreadsheet with, with uh, 389 uh, authorities and we looked at their responses and then we classified them uh, according to like problem areas. And uh, we did this with the topmost uh, authorities so those that uh, got the most requests in order to help uh, the most uh, number of users. And as, uh, it's, as you can tell, it's, it's not a unified reaction, um, um, but they do talk to each other. So it's quite, uh, it's quite similar. So these, the answers, they, they use a similar kind of templates to answer, and that makes it easier for us to cluster them, which is quite handy. And what we do then is uh, the following. So they made, the, our users made the request through our FOI portal. So we actually have uh, the answers there if they are made by email from the authorities. And here you can see what a response looks like on our platform. And since we have classified the kinds of responses by authority, um, we can easily detect a certain kind of response. And here we detected a sentence that says that the original request for the food safety report by the user cannot be made by email. They must be made by postal mail. That is wrong. Uh, a request under the consumer information law uh, does not adhere to any kind of form. You know, you can make it in any form you like and email is totally fine. So we show uh, the user a little hint on the side and offer a button that pre-fills a reply with a template suitable to the situation. So we give them a little snippet and that they can send back to the authority explaining how the legal situation works and convincing the authority to, in this case, uh, continue working on this request uh, despite it being sent by email. And this uh, recently we uh, introduced something even more complex. Um, we in integrated a feature where you can actually appeal requests and an appeal in Germany has to be signed. Um, so you actually have to uh, write a letter to the authority. And what we uh, generated is like a little hint on the side that lets you then go to a form generator that generates a PDF for you. So you just have to fill in um, the date of the decision of the authority and uh, their, uh, their little reference number. And then uh, we generate a PDF letter that you can print and sign and then uh, send to the authority. And we also 
send this PDF uh, as an email to the authority as like a advanced copy, let's say. And um, this uh, we will use in, in more and more circumstances. So this, uh, this example letter is uh, written by our lawyers and uh, they went a bit overboard. They wrote like 10 pages or something of like legal argument why in this case, the appeal here is about that the authority only wanted to allow that you can um, come to them to look at the uh, food safety reports. So they will not send copies. You have to come into their offices and look at them there. And you need actually under the law, you need a good reason to do that. And a good reason is actually not that you might publish the report online if you get a copy. Um, and uh, this legal argument has been expanded by our lawyers to 10 pages. And now uh, the, our requesters need to then send a 10 page letter and the, which actually costs a bit more than just a seven or a six page letter or something. Uh, but uh, alas, our um, lawyers went a bit overboard. But writing an appeal letter, uh, we will use it uh, now more often. We have now like a tool that can generate these. And because this is like the next step in uh, a legal proceeding uh, under FOI, we, we want to make it as easy as possible. And um, this is like one kind of a, a uh, bridge technology uh, before uh, actually uh, people in the future, hopefully they will not have to sign it anymore, but right now they do. And we can email and fax these documents and uh, we'll use any kind of technology necessary to help our users in this regard. Unfortunately, our the little diagram here uh, is uh, how to get a food safety report is still not uh, complete and it gets more complicated. So the business gets a notice from the authority about the request yeah? um, because the business needs to know about it because by law they can ask the requester for the name and address, but also because they can go to court and against the authority to stop the release of information. This is like a normal administrative procedure in Germany. If you are part of an uh, administrative process, you always have the ability to appeal to a, a court. Um, also, the business has that. And uh, since there are no rules about uh, proactive transparency, since it's not published, since this is not really regulated, and the business can go to court. And, but what kind of business would go to court? Uh, certainly only the most desperate, um, where you know, the food safety report is really bad. Um, turns out, no, there are a lot of businesses willing to go to court. And uh, why is that? Well, I stylized it here as a flaming eye on top of a condiment bottle, um, but it is uh, the hotel and restaurant lobby. And they have been outraged uh, by our campaign since our launch. And uh, since I've commissioned lots of legal reports by multiple uh, professionals uh, declaring our platform unlawful. So they are the ones um, that uh, tell the businesses uh, to oppose this transparency and also um, it give them uh, uh, guidance on how to fight it. The hotel and restaurant lobby is quite weird in Germany uh, in that regard. So they say, okay, the food safety reports are too complicated. You know, consumers wouldn't understand them. So that's why they can't be released. But they also say a smiley system is too simple and couldn't possibly capture the intricacies of food safety. So um, you can't have it both ways really. And looking at the food safety report in Denmark, it seems very well designed actually. It's striking a nice balance between like detail uh, in the text and the grades and an easy form, um, it's a, an easy summary in form of the smiley. So you can quickly tell, you know, it's safe to, it's safe to eat there. But uh, still lots uh, of these uh, court cases started and as a platform, we're not really involved in these court cases and neither are the requesters. They, the cases are between the businesses and the authorities. The requesters are informed about these um, court cases and they get all documents that pertain to the case as a copy, which is quite nice. Um, but still it's difficult, uh, sometimes difficult for us to know how many cases there are in Germany, but there are certainly more than a hundred and we've already collected um, lots of decisions and most of these decisions are actually in our favor. So there are preliminary rulings where you know, they, the court hurries to a decision and most of these are actually not in our favor, but in the main proceedings, uh, all of them are in our favor so far and uh, three of them actually uh, are at the highest court level and uh, there's a final decision that uh, the food safety reports uh, can be released. And uh, the requesters are informed as an as interested third party. 
And we are also involved in some strategic uh, lawsuits ourselves where we uh, sue authorities or are making a request in a certain uh, area where we know uh, that the business uh, will um, you know, try to fight it uh, in order to get the information. And getting this information is super important. So this picture shows someone who has received documents from court informing him that the business he requested the food safety report from um, uh, has gone to court. And the documents actually included two legal reports with about 100 pages by two professors of law arguing that our platform breaks EU level laws. Interesting viewpoints that we hadn't seen before and we wouldn't have known about them if the requester hadn't come to us. So th this guy, he scanned uh, these pages for us and sent them in five emails because it wouldn't fit into one. Um, and we are very happy about it because it's, it's very important to stay in contact with, this, uh, with our community. Otherwise we wouldn't know about these developments. Um, and in return, we try to connect them online so they can talk to each other and we have a forum and we also write our own legal reports uh, that we send to them so they can um, uh, use them and submit them into the court cases they're involved in. So our lessons here are uh, twofold. So go broad when possible, go deep when necessary. What I mean here is um, we we could have included only, for example, Berlin venues and just uh, focus on, on a specific region. But technology has, has actually allowed us to scale our support infrastructure in a way that we can help more people use their right to information. Um, and so th that has actually quite helped. And we cannot fight all these authorities and businesses directly. So having a community of supporters really did the trick here. Um, without them, uh, we, only, we wouldn't have the, had the impact uh, we have now. And we do have our own strategic lawsuits in place to move the legal story along um, with like, uh, you know, lawyers and uh, very expensive lawyers, but you know, it's, it's important to, to fight these uh, steps up the ladder until the final decision. Um, but we have to choose where to do this. We, we just hired a full-time lawyer for our platform and uh, we're looking to scaling our legal support infrastructure as well, but uh, it's definitely more difficult to scale that um, because lawyers are expensive and, um, uh, you have to really choose uh, where to fight uh, the, uh, the, the right fight there. So what about our campaign goal? You know, we wanted a smiley system. And there is actually an upcoming uh, legislation in Berlin. Um, it's not yet in the local parliament. I think they are busy with other things now, but uh, it has been announced and the borrowers of Berlin, I think they are also more or less convinced because they are quite burdened by all the uh, requests they have gotten. And Berlin wants to move forward here and actually uh, have some kind of a transparency legislation around food safety, which is great. However, on the other side, the, our federal council uh, recently proposed a ban to our national parliament uh, about uh, the ban on mirroring of food safety reports. So they actually want to forbid copies of these reports uh, that can be then found online. It's quite targeted at us, we would think. Yeah, it's kind of a lex pot secret. Um, and we're not quite sure what to think of it. It's, uh, it's, it's very weird because, you know, information really wants to be shared and trying to have a, like a ban on copies, uh, like a digital rights management of something, it really never really works and not quite sure where they want to go there. But if I had to apply a smiley system to these two items, uh, I would uh, use these ones here. Yeah. So happy face for uh, the upcoming transparency legislation, but uh, confused, scary face uh, for the other one. And that was it. Uh, thank you uh, and uh, stay safe uh, with the food and uh, you know, the virus.